Hey, what's up, guys? Let's talk about the coronavirus. Let's talk about why some Christians, why a lot of Christians are scared of the coronavirus. Okay? This is a very big topic right now during these days, and I think it's very important for us to talk about it and communicate, and let's just be real. Let's just be transparent. Let's be honest, and let's talk about what the Word of God says, okay? Let's grow in Christ. I want to welcome you to grow with me as I grow in Christ. So let's grow. Um, so if you don't know who I am, my name is Nick Acosta. Uh, I'm, I'm a preacher. Um, I've been I've been a youth pastor. Um, I operate as an evangelist. I operate as a teacher. Um, you know, I've been involved in in um, leading Bible studies, leading um, discipleship classes, Sunday school classes, um, just preaching, doing conferences, a lot of evangelism, a lot of outreaches, a lot of trainings, equipping of the saints and things like that, leadership um, roles and stuff like that. Um, and uh, right now, as I'm, as I'm working on finishing my, my master's um, degree in practical theology, I got a few months left to finish um, my master's. And uh, I've, been, I've been writing some papers and having conversations with certain individuals about today's time, these days um, that we find ourselves dealing with quarantine and dealing with, you know, lockdowns and, 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 and all these things because of the coronavirus. And it just brought a lot to my attention, guys. So I, I want to talk to you guys about that. Um, why are there Christians who are scared of the coronavirus? Why are there Christians who are fearful right now? We know um, that the world is, is fearful um, but we know that Christians are too. Now, this video is not to, you know, try to bring down those who are scared or, you know, try to shame them or anything like that. It's just a video that, that, I'm, that I'm making right now to help you um, get a, a, a better perspective on uh, why you might be fearful, what the reasons are. And, and, and if you find these reasons to be uh, logical or to be um, scriptural, then, you know, by all means, continue in in making sure you're safe um, in the ways that you're doing, right? Taking the precautions and stuff like that. Um, but 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 if not, then then maybe I can help you walk in, in, in faith a little more, confidence and trust in the word of God a little more. So So there's a lot of Christians, right, who are scared of the coronavirus right now. Um, and are acting like the world and are not, you know, trying to get into contact with any people. They're wearing their masks. They're, they're not going anywhere. They're not walking anywhere. They're not meeting with anyone. Uh, they're uh, reading all the, all the blogs, all the articles, all the information that the world is reading um, and producing about how to stay safe, how to stay healthy, how to prevent getting the virus, washing your hands, doing this, doing that, etc., right? Um, and people have sent me this, right? Family members have sent me this. Um, people have sent me this on social media and, and, and I don't even bother looking at that. Um, not because I'm, you know, prideful or arrogant or cocky or anything. I just understand some things and I believe some things. Now, I'm not telling you to believe like me. I'm just letting you know what my perspective is. Um, my perspective is this. If you're scared of the coronavirus or any virus, if you're scared of sickness and disease, if you're scared that something bad's going to happen to you when you wake up in the morning, when you go to sleep at night, or when you walk out of your front door, then I believe that you might not be right with God. You might be walking into things that your God tells you to not walk in, and you know that you're not on his good side. You know that you have brought some condemnation on yourself by your disobedience and rebellion. Even if you confess you're a Christian, you're not living like it and God is not pleased with you. So my opinion is you're walking in fear because you know you're not pleasing God and you're again living as if you were still his enemy. The Bible says that before we came to Christ, we were enemies of God. Right. And, and we were under condemnation when Jesus came. He said, I came to save the world and to give those who believe in me eternal life so that they do not perish. I didn't come to condemn the world. And he said, because the world is already condemned. 
the Bible says that we were at enmity with God. So if you've been living against God, contrary to God's ways and word and will and commands, then you've been living like an enemy of God. And my, that might be the reason that you're walking in fear. You're, you're kind of panicking. You're kind of paranoid, feeling like, oh man, all these things I've done. I, I might, I might have been going to church. I might have been talking like a Christian, posting on social media like a Christian, but I have not been living like one. And therefore you have that fear. You believe that the Lord's going to judge you and that you have brought condemnation on yourself and the wrath of God is going to catch up with you. You will reap what you sow. So that might be the reason why you're walking in fear. Okay. Um, now, if that's not you, I might get to you after this. Okay. But if that's you, my best advice for you is just to talk to the Lord. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Tell the Lord you've been wrong. You've been living, uh, you know, incorrectly. You've been walking according to the flesh, not according to the spirit. You've been walking in disobedience. The Bible says if you confess, right, if you admit your wrongdoings, your wickedness to the Lord, and you're real about it, you're honest about it, and you really want to change, you really want to submit to the Father and allow his spirit to transform you and, and help you live as a follower of Christ, then the Bible says that if you confess your sins, that he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So all you have to do is come to him. The Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace and he will give you a grace, mercy for your time of need. So if you're feeling like maybe this is me, maybe I've been walking in fear, thinking I'm going to get the, vi the virus like all these unbelievers, like all these people of the world, even though the Bible tells me that no evil shall befall me. Even though the Bible tells me that God works all things together for my good, that God is my healer, that God is my protector, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Even though the Bible tells me all these things, even though the Bible tells me I'm no longer cursed, but I'm blessed through Christ, I'm still scared of sicknesses and colds and viruses and flus. Maybe it's because I know I've been living wrong and I feel like the Lord's going to discipline me somehow, or I feel like I'm no longer under the Lord's protection and covering somehow. If this is you... I advise you and I recommend that you talk to the Lord and that you be real with him. The Bible says that those who humble themselves under the mighty hand of God will receive his grace, will be exalted. See, the proud don't get, don't get exalted. The proud don't receive the grace of God. It's only the humble that do that. So if you feel like you've been walking in, 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 in the ways, doing the things that the Lord hates, that the Lord has not called you to live in as a son, as a daughter of God, as a believer, as a follower of Christ, then I would recommend that you just turn from those things, turn to God and just ask him to forgive you and ask him to help you live according to his word. Amen. And that should uplift a lot of that fear because you're going to now have a clean conscience and you're going to believe that God is for you that God is not trying to bring wrath upon you anymore and that you're right with him and at peace with him because you're following his ways. See, the Bible tells us over and over again that those who follow the ways of God, that those who practice righteousness have no reason to fear, okay? Even, even the government, even the politicians, even the police officers, even soldiers, we have no reason to fear the authority that God put on this earth that is meant to punish the unjust, the unrighteous, and the wicked, and the criminals, right? The righteous, the just have no reason to fear anything because we know that if we're right with God, that's all we need to be protected and to be healthy and to be favored. Amen. That's from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Okay. If you don't, if you don't believe me, look at the lives of all the men of God, all the women of God. God continues to promise them. Like, look, a lot of things may come against you. You may see a lot of things. You may experience a lot of battles, but the Lord will fight your battles. The Lord will protect you. The Lord will keep you. There may be a death angel passing over, but if you just put this blood on the doorpost, you will be safe. Come on now. It's the same thing in Christ, but even better. The Bible says that the new covenant is a better covenant with better, with greater promises. Okay? So if you feel like you've been walking in fear and that you're scared of the coronavirus, that you feel like you might get it if you come in contact with people or, or if you get around certain places, you may need to repent and get right with God because it may be. It may be a, a, a proof, a confirmation to you that you haven't been living right. Another thing, if you're scared of the coronavirus, it may be that 
um, you don't quite believe the word of God as you think you do or you claim you do. You may need to start reading the Bible a little more. You may need to start getting around um, just more confident and bold and, 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 and faithful believers that hold on to the word of God and the promises of God. Okay, I don't care what denomination you're in. I'm not promoting any denomination, Baptist, Methodist, uh, you know, charismatic, Pentecostal, not whatever. I, you know, I don't care about none of that. I, I just I just see that the only important thing is that we read the word of God and that we believe the word of God as the word of God is written without us adding or taking away anything from it. What denomination doesn't add or take? I think they all do. So I don't even promote any denomination. I just promote us having a personal relationship with the Lord, getting into his word and asking him to teach us and reveal truth to us. And if we believe that there's somebody, um, you know, locally that can help us grow, maybe a Bible study group. Um, you know, we have our online Bible studies through Zoom. You guys could, you know, go to the description below and sign up for those. Those are free. You can sign up for those. You know, I, I lead those every Tuesday night. Maybe you can grow that way. Um, maybe you, there's a local church you can go to maybe there's a home groups you know home meetings home churches uh something that you can uh, link into and grow from whatever leadership is there if you believe that they're they're speaking they're teaching they're preaching from the bible right so maybe it, may, maybe you're scared of the coronavirus right now because you don't quite believe the promises of god you don't quite believe the things that god says he does for his people for those who are right with him for those who keep his word Amen. So maybe that maybe that means you need to read more. Maybe that means you need to get around other believers who are hungry, who are bold, who believe God. Maybe that means that you need to maybe read some more Christian books that talk about faith, that talk about the promises of God, that talk about the new covenant, that talk about being under grace or or, or being in Christ, whatever. Right. Maybe it means you um, just spending more time in prayer, more time with God. Right. A lot of people don't spend time with God and then wonder why it's hard for them to believe in God or believe God. It's like you, you don't know him. You don't know him. Right. So you got to get to know him. Right. Um, a lot of people, you know, wonder why they never hear God and they never spend time with him. And, you know, the Proverbs, uh, Proverbs three says, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he'll direct your paths. The key right there is that he's going to direct your paths. But the key right there is that you need to acknowledge him. If you're not looking at me right now, if you're not, if you don't have your eyes open looking at me right now, how are you supposed to know that I'm pointing this way? You're not, you're not going to see me pointing, trying to direct you and lead you this way. And that's the same thing with the Lord. He, he likes to talk to us and help us and teach us and guide us and disciple us and, and tell us go this way and go that way. He wants to order our steps, but if we're not paying attention to him, listening to him, spending time with him, we will not see his direction, his instruction. We won't hear him. So maybe you need to spend more time with the Lord. And um, as you do, as you begin to, to be reminded how real he is, how powerful and mighty he is, and how true his word is, as you read his word and see all his promises and see all the things that, that his, his servants, that his children endured and persevered by believing in him, then maybe you'll start believing that he'll keep you safe and protected and healed more and more. And you'll be less and less scared of the plagues and of the pestilences and of the sicknesses and diseases that take place in the world because they're for the world, not you. Amen. So maybe that's that's a, that's a reminder for you. Get, get, get to know God more. Get around believers who who talk about the word and, um, or maybe, you know, start reading the word more. Some, something needs to happen. Something needs to change. If you're scared of this coronavirus, something needs to change in your mentality. The Bible says, pull down strongholds. That's a mental thing. That's thoughts. Cast down arguments and imaginations. That's thoughts. Imaginations, that's all in the mind, right? And bring them down to the obedience of Christ. You, you, every thought that contradicts the word of God is a lie. So if you get thoughts, um, or if you're watching the news or, or if Pete or if your friends, your family are telling you you're supposed to be scared, you you might die. God's not going to protect you. You can't have faith. Just just faith. You have to have wisdom, too. You know, anything that contradicts the Bible is not wisdom and is not good for you. So you have to pull those thoughts down and just reject them, stiff on them. Right. And just remember what God said. God said that, hey, <laughs> no evil shall befall you. God said 
first of all, Jesus gave his disciples authority over all sicknesses and diseases. Let's let's just let's just accept and admit that scriptural fact. He gave his disciples authority over all sicknesses and diseases. And guess what? And over all demons too. So I don't care what it is. Even something venomous, even something poisonous. Jesus said, if you, for some reason, you drink something poisonous, it won't do you any harm. But you have to believe that, right? Jesus said, anything that you eat, as long as you give God thanks for it through prayer and through the word of God, that's, that stuff is sanctified. You can eat whatever. It's not going to hurt you. <laughs> that's what Jesus said, right? Uh, everything is good to eat. So I don't care if you come in contact with something poisonous. I don't care if you intake something, right? Same thing. Somebody sneezing on you. Same thing. You touch somebody's germ. If poison can't hurt you, if if some type of food can't hurt you, come on. He even said you, you can take up serpents and, and you will by no means be harmed. We saw in the book of Acts, that wasn't just figure, figure of speech. Paul was out there. He got there in the island after the ship being wrecked and he was grabbing some sticks he was making a fire. They just got to the island. I'm sure they were cold and wet. They needed some heat. And guess what? A serpent came out and bit him. And, 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 and it clinged to his hand. And he just shook it off and threw it to the fire. And guess what? He didn't die. He didn't get sick. Nothing happened. And that brought a lot of fear of the Lord to the people who were there. And they were like, oh, Paul's God might be the real deal. Right? That's what is supposed to happen. We're not supposed to be scared with the world. We're supposed to show the world that we're not scared with them. We actually believe in our God. We really believe God. Right? And, and, and that's something that's so important for us to get. We got to get, get serious about believing God. If we don't believe God, then we're going to think any little thing can hurt us and harm us and kill us. Oh, I can't eat this. I'm going to get cancer. Oh, I can't get this. I'm going to get the flu. Oh, I can't go there. I can't, can't touch this person. What? Jesus said, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. He didn't say if the sick lay hands on you, you'll get sick. Jesus said, you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Jesus didn't say if the sick lay hands on you, you will get sick. <laughs> Think about that during these days of the coronavirus. You're supposed to be healthy. And in fact, you actually have the authority to bring healing to others instead of being fearful that others are going to bring sickness to you. Let's grow. Jesus is Lord. Amen. So maybe you're not right with God. You've been living in sin and disobedience. Maybe you need to believe God's word more. You need to spend more time with him, reading Christian books, reading the Bible, spending time with, you know, um, hungry believers or under some good teaching. Um, and number three, maybe you need to just, um, man, th and this, this was tough. This was tough. You need to ask God for understanding. Maybe you, you, you haven't got asked the Father for understanding. Maybe you haven't felt like you needed understanding. Um, the third reason why you might be scared of the coronavirus is because you think you have it all figured out. You think you know it all. You think your denomination taught you right, and you haven't asked God for understanding. You may be walking in ignorance, okay? So the first reason you may be walking in sin, disobedience. The second one, you may be walking in a lack of faith. You don't believe God's word enough. And number three, you may be ignorant. Some way, somehow, you need to ask God to reveal his word to you. Ask God to reveal the new covenant, what Jesus provided and paid the price for you to have and to walk in as a believer. Okay, I know Christianity is not all about you. Christianity is about what God did for us and how much he loved us and him wanting to grant us eternal life. Right. But Christianity is also us entering into a covenant with the living God. OK, us becoming the seed of Abraham through Jesus Christ, becoming blessed with believing Abraham. Come on, read the New Testament, read the book of Hebrews, read Galatians, read Romans. Come on, guys. We have to understand that we are in covenant with God and that there are some promises in this covenant that that promise and guarantee to protect us or heal us or forgive us or cover us or provide for us, whatever the topic may be. There are a lot of promises in the new covenant that if we're ignorant about them, we're not going to expect them and anticipate them every day. If you don't know something, you can't believe for it. Amen. So if there's ignorance, then there can't be any faith. 
right? So if you don't know that God said, hey, under the new covenant, you're no longer cursed but blessed. Under the new covenant, you have authority over sickness and disease. Over the new covenant, by my stripes, you will be healed. Some people may say, yeah, that scripture is about us getting healed from sin, right? But sickness entered in through sin. If you read Genesis, when God judged the serpent or the devil, right? When God judged Adam and when God judged Eve, he brought a curse in the earth. Adam, Eve, the earth, and, and the devil. He brought a curse and a repercussion and consequence to all three of them. Mankind, the devil, and the earth. And sickness entered in. Death entered in. Okay? Labor pains entered. A lot of things entered in. And when Jesus says he's our redeemer to redeem us from the curse of the law, listen, guys, that a lot of the a lot of the things that entered in through sin if we're forgiven of our sin and if we're no longer walking in sin we're no longer slaves of sin right there's no reason for sickness to be around now if we go back to sin and now if 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 we depart from the faith now if we you know take God's grace for something that it's not and, and try to live in the flesh and in disobedience, trying to mock God. I can't promise you, I can't guarantee that, you know, God's not going to try to get your attention and discipline you and, and something worse might come, come upon you. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I mean, Jesus said it himself. He healed somebody and then he said to them, go and sin no more. He, he right? He, uh, he, he said, go and sin no more unless something worse comes upon you. He's talking about a sickness here. Right. So I'm not saying to you that just because Jesus already came, you know, nobody's supposed to be sick. I'm not saying that. But if you're right with God, if you're under the new covenant, sickness is not supposed to be present because when sin came, sickness came. But when righteousness comes, guess what? Wholeness comes. Amen. So you have to understand what kind of covenant you are in with God. And maybe that knowledge, that understanding, that wisdom that comes in is enough for you to start believing it and expecting it and for you to stop being afraid of things such as the coronavirus. And that's going to help you walk by faith, not by sight, not by fear, not by emotion, not by the things that the world scares. Listen, you have to remember the world is not in the same covenant with the same God that you are in. So stop being scared of the things that the world scared of. They're enemies of God. They should be afraid of God. They're enemies of God. They're not right with God. They're not in covenant with God. Of course course, sickness and disease and all these, you know, horrendous, terrible, horrible things are going to come upon them left and right. But the Bible says that, look, man, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. It shall not come near you. Only with your eyes will you see the rewards of the wicked. That means you will see the wicked receive their, their rewards. You're not going to experience them yourself if you're the just, if you're the righteous. Amen. So I was just want to remind you those things and, and, and encourage you and motivate you. Come on. If this is if, if one of these things um, pertain to you, turn to God, turn to his word, turn to the body of Christ, turn right. Come on. Turn to wisdom. Ask him for wisdom. Ask him for understanding of the new covenant so that you can start walking by faith and experience boldness so that you can be finally free from the fear of the things that God does not want for his children. Amen. So let's grow. Come on. You either need some more faith. You either need some more understanding and wisdom or you need repentance and you need to practice righteousness so that this whole coronavirus no longer scares you and makes you afraid. Amen. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we free? Who, who, who shall we fear? Right? He's the strength of our life. Of whom shall we be afraid? There's no reason for us to fear if we're right with God, if we've been born again and we have entered the new covenant. So I want to leave you with that. Okay? If those, if those, one of those three things pertain to you, I guarantee you, if you make the necessary change, you're going to see a difference. If you start believing differently, expecting differently, you will see different. I mean, the Bible says, as a man thinks, so he is. Right. The Bible says that Jesus taught that if somebody believes and doesn't doubt in their in their heart, they can actually tell a mountain to move and it will be moved. <laughs> I mean, he commanded a fig tree to be dried up. They came back and it was dried up. You think Jesus believed? Of course. You think Jesus was afraid or fearful or something like that? No. You think Jesus didn't have wisdom or understanding? No. You think Jesus w was walking in sin and in disobedience and righteousness? No. So all these three reasons are the same reasons why we may not be seeing the things or why we may be scared of the things that the world is seeing. 
So let's adjust. Let's make a change and we'll see the difference. Amen. If this video blessed you, please like this video. If you have a question or a comment or if, if, if you if you're wondering about something, go ahead and leave a comment on here. OK, if you feel like this might bless somebody, you know, please share it on your social media um, platform, wherever you are, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and uh, that's it. And if you want a Let's Grow in Christ t-shirt um, or a free prayer t-shirt, the link is in the description below. Um, if you want to give to our ministry, the link is in the description below. If you want to sign up for a free online Bible studies through Zoom every Tuesday night at 7 Eastern time, the, 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 the link is in the description below as well. Okay? I hope this blesses you and I hope this helps you to start walking in faith, to start knowing what God wants for his people who are right with him so that we can be free from the fear of something that's not meant for us and then we can start walking boldly and the world can see how much peace we, we have and how much health we have. And they may just ask, hey, how can I be saved? Hey, how can I know your God? And isn't that what we want? We are a light, so let's live like it. Bless you guys. Take care. See you later.